In this lesson, we'll discuss molecule polarity, that is, how to determine if a molecule is polar or nonpolar. Why do we need to determine if a molecule is polar or nonpolar? Well, that will tell us something about its properties. Remember how covalent bonds can be nonpolar or polar. Molecules overall can be nonpolar or polar as well. Polar molecules are dipoles. That means they have two oppositely charged ends. One end of the molecule is a little bit more negative and the other is a little bit more positive. You can also say that polar molecules have a dipole moment. When you look at the bonds within a molecule, if it has polar covalent bonds, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a polar molecule. Nonpolar molecules are not dipoles and have no dipole moment. If you look at a molecule and the bonds within it, if there are nonpolar covalent bonds, you usually do have a nonpolar molecule. To determine if a molecule is polar or nonpolar, we are going to look at the polarity of the bonds based on electronegativity, but we're also going to use Vesper theory to help us talk about the shape of the molecule to determine if uh, there are two, two oppositely charged ends to the molecule. Remember, Lewis dot structures don't always indicate what a molecule looks like in three-dimensional space. That's why we use Vesper theory. Here we have the Lewis dot structure for water and then what it actually looks like using Vesper theory. We have a bent shape. If we look at the electronegativity difference within the bonds, we'll see that oxygen has a higher electronegativity than hydrogen and so electrons would be attracted more toward the oxygen plus oxygen's got these two lone pairs so the oxygen end of the water molecule is definitely more negative than the hydrogen end and therefore water is a polar molecule it has two oppositely charged ends Let's look at some more molecules. In beryllium chloride, the chlorine is more electronegative than the beryllium, so the electrons would be attracted toward the chlorines. However, this is a linear shape, so it's kind of like a tug of war for electrons that nobody wins. This is a nonpolar molecule. carbon tetrachloride, CCl4. Again, the chlorines are more electronegative and would attract the electrons toward them, but they're all equally spaced. They're 109.5 degrees apart. So while this chlorine might be attracting electrons, the other three are attracting back. And this is also a nonpolar molecule. We don't end up with two oppositely charged ends. In H2S, the sulfur is more electronegative than the hydrogen and would attract the electrons toward itself. And the sulfur also has a couple of lone pairs. So that whole end of the molecule where the sulfur is, is more negative than where the hydrogens are. And so we have two oppositely charged ends to our molecule. This is a polar molecule. And in ammonia, NH3, the nitrogen attracts the electrons more than the hydrogens do. And there is that lone pair up on top. So that whole end of the molecule is a little bit more negative and the hydrogen end is more positive. So this one is a polar molecule as well. In xenon tetrafluoride, the fluorines are going to attract the electrons more than the xenon. And this shape is the square planar shape. So it's kind of like two linears put together. Um, the fluorines, you know, will attract the electrons, but there's always a fluorine directly across from it pulling back. Uh, so this one is a nonpolar molecule. So to generalize, 
we've seen molecules that have lone pairs on the central atom, and they most of the time will be polar. There are two exceptions. One that we saw in the last example with the xenon tetrafluoride, the octahedral geometry, and the square planar shape. There would be um, an electron pair here and here. And uh, the other exception is the trigonal bipyramidal geometry linear shape. And so even though there are lone pairs on the central atom, um, the, the attached atoms are uh, directly across from each other and would cancel each other out in terms of attracting electrons. So basically, to determine if a molecule is polar or nonpolar, look at the central atom. If there are lone pairs, it will probably be polar. Uh, watch out for these uh, two shapes mentioned here. But otherwise, the general trend holds.